So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I use this one light to create this image. Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And for you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area of about 2 meters wide by 3.5 meters deep. However, today we're going to use more of my studio. So we're going to be using this area here and an area there in the back because my light will be put behind this scrim. So this one will be my main modifier. It's basically about a 1.2 meter by 2 meter Front, uh, it's, based, it's just a diffuser from Photix. These are the things that you find inside those 5-in-1 reflectors. And I'm using it to diffuse this light. So what is this light that I will be using today? This is the Nanlite FS300B. It's a brand new light from Nanlite. It's a 300 watt Cobb light that's by color. That's why I am so excited for this one, especially here in the studio. Just to give you a brief background, I do love all these Nanlite lights. Like the baby brother of this one, well, it's a different model, the Forza 60B. It's my favorite go-to light that I use every time I am on location, especially if I am shooting after sunset. Because I love the ability to be able to change the color temperature to match that of my existing ambient light. Now, sometimes 60 watts might not be powerful enough. That's why they came out with a Nanlite Forza 300B. Now, that is a bicolor version very similar to this one that can also be battery operated. However, the biggest downside with the 300B, the Forza 300B, is the fact that it's so much bigger than this one. Well, the head is smaller, but you've got a battery pack that goes with it. Plus, it is quite expensive. That's why there was a big clamor for Nanlite to create a purely wall outlet or wall powered studio light that's also bicolor and that's why they came up with this one, the FS300B. Now, this FS300B is basically everything that you would expect it to do. You've got all the features that you've come to love with Nanlite, like for example, the the features of all the light things that you do for video, which I don't really use that much because I don't do video. But the most important thing, it's got good color accuracy, plus it is now by color 300 watts. And finally, we have the full Bowens mount, the real Bowens mount. So that means I can use every modifier that I have here in the studio because most of my modifiers are Bowens mount. And also, as a disclaimer, Nanlite did send me this light, but this video is not sponsored by Nanlite. I just love their products, that's why I'm so thankful that they actually sent this unit in advance for me to actually test out. So thank you very much, Nanlite, for that. But of course, you guys don't have any control with what I'm going to be saying about this light. So while I was editing this video, I realized that I missed out on a very important feature that's inherent in the FS series of the Nanlite lights. These FS series are actually built for studio photographers. And why is that? Look at the LED. Do you see how wide apart they are? Therefore, it creates a very big point source or a light source. And by doing that, they are able to create softer shadows than that of their Forza series. That's why this was really built for studio photographers. Now, I will be making a really detailed side-by-side -side comparison between the Forza series and the FS series in another video, maybe right after this one. So if you guys want to watch that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So how do I use this light and why do I love it so much? Well. I love what we call practical lighting. In other words, I want to be able to match my light to the existing ambient light whenever I am shooting, whether it be here in the studio or on location. Sometimes I may be in a restaurant that's ha that has a lot of ambient light that I would want to use, but the color temperature I cannot change. That's why it's essential that I have a light that I can change my color temperature to match that 
of the existing ambient light. That's what I used to do with my 60B, but there are some times that I just need a little bit more power and this is perfect and it is very portable. Well, not very portable, but it's portable enough for me to bring it on location so long as I know I can plug it in somewhere. So how am I going to use this today in this particular shoot? Well, I'm going to have my wife Coco sit down here and I will turn on this light which will act like my existing ambient light because the concept of the shoot is that I want her here very dramatic sipping a cup of coffee and making it seem as if the light was just coming from there. As you guys can see now, the color temperature of this light is about in the 2700, 3200 Kelvin range. Well, I'm just guesstimating because I don't have a light meter to, to or a color meter to check the exact color temperature of this one, but I can look at it and visualize more or less if my light is correct. Now, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this light here in the back and I'm gonna go and talk about the camera that we will be using for today. So the camera that I will be using is my Sony A7 Mark IV with a 50 millimeter 1.2 GM lens. Now I'm gonna be shooting this at 1.2 high up so that I can get a bit of perspective just to get that look that I'm going for because I wanna bring in the carpet for you guys to be able to see also the top of the table. Now I use a 50 millimeter so that I can control a bit of the distortion even though I know shooting from above will distort the face a little. In other words, I might make her face look bigger than her body but I think it should be okay. Now, as you guys can see, I actually have my NAND light set up there and I can control everything remotely using the NAND light app, which I will turn on now. So here's the NAND light app from here. I can just adjust the power temperature that I want or even the color temperature. Now I'm gonna explain later why it's important that this light is by color. And of course, as what I was, as what I was saying earlier, you've got some effects mode like for example, the CCT loop, or if you want the candle fire look there, it's like a candle fire, or you've got the welding look, everything that you could think of from all the other NAND light lights is here, right? And of course, I forgot to mention one of the reasons on why this particular light is so exciting, will be so exciting, which I am assuming to a lot of people is because of the price. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure by the time this video comes out, the price will be released but I am certain that it is not gonna break the bank, okay? I don't have the exact prices with me also yet. All right, so now what is my camera set at? Let me see, am I on manual mode there for there? I'm on manual mode on ISO 100 and at F1.2, wait, let me see if I'm still recording this. There. I'm on ISO 100 F1.2, 1 over 160. So let me turn this one off so you could see what my exposure is. So my exposure is set for that lamp over there. Now, the reason why I want it there is so that it gives me the look of practical light. In other words, I want my light to look as if it was just coming from that particular lamp. No other light source is supposed to be in the frame, just that particular lamp, okay? So my white balance, my white balance, I'm assuming that light is more or less in about the 2700 to 3200 range, but I still want it warm because if I put my white balance, let's say for example, on 3200, it's just gonna make everything cool and neutral, which I don't want because I want to have that warmth. So I'll set now my white balance to 3400 Kelvin, or sorry, to 4000 Kelvin. There we go. And once that's set, we're good enough, okay? And then I will adjust, adjust the power accordingly to how I see it fit, all right? So with that out of the way, I think it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be, again, my subject for the day. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Hi. Thank you very much again for doing this. And of course, we'd like to thank our friend, Mele Jimenez, for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup for today. All right, babe, take a seat. Okay, so you have your coffee mug there? Yes. Oh, there we go. So I want you facing me, but facing out. Does that make sense? Your body facing me, all right. There we go, perfect. Then you face out towards that general direction. So profile, no, not this way, but profile going there. Okay. Oh, that's too much. So can you put your left shoulder towards me? Some more, some more. So you can see here that more or less we're getting the light coming from that same general direction, making it seem as if it came from that particular light. Now, let me show you some things that's actually very important. I'm sorry, babe, 
is it okay if I actually explain a few things first before we start shooting? Okay. So you guys might be asking, why am I using, why am I so excited to buy color light? Why don't I just use this one, let's say at 5600 Kelvin, a normal light, and just change everything via white balance? This is why. Look, my light is set at 4000 Kelvin. If I put my light now at 5600 Kelvin, you will see that the light there is a different color than that of the light hitting my subject's face. Now having that, even if I shift my white balance, since both lights are not the same color temperature, one will be cooler than the other or one will be warmer than the other. It's always best that we actually have it, let's say, on more or less the same color temperature. I can actually set it at 2700 Kelvin and then shift my white balance here now and put it to maybe 3200 Kelvin. Let's see. There, 3200 Kelvin, there, 3400 Kelvin, it's perfect. Warm enough for it to be, to, for you to know that it's warm light, but at the same time, you guys can probably see how warm the light is now in the video because my video cameras are set at 5600 Kelvin. So now, since I've already set my exposure to that light over there, I will now just adjust my light to how I want the mood to be there. Maybe at about, 15%. That should be perfect. All right. Okay, babe, let's take one shot. That's very nice. That's beautiful. All right. Oh, you know what? You guys are not seeing it. You're not seeing the settings. Let me turn on HDMI info display so you guys can see it. I turned it off for one of my shoots. There, now you can see and you see how everything's just spot on. Okay, perfect. All right. I love it. Can you lean forward a bit, babe? No, maybe sideways this way and then lean forward. Yeah, there we go. Now, the light is coming. Smile there. The light is coming from that general direction. And it's right because the light is there, right? The, the practical light is there. However, what if, as you can see in the images, it's actually very high contrast. The light is soft but high contrast because we're not getting any light from this general direction. That's why I can now put in a reflector like this. Just put it here maybe. There, just to bounce back the light and open up the shadows on the right side of Coco's face. All right, babe, can you profile this way? There, very nice, beautiful. Oh, I love it. Now I'm actually shooting wider than normal because I'm shooting for, for um, uh, Instagram. Oh, by the way, um, I forgot to mention earlier, everything that you're seeing now is straight out of the camera. Absolutely no editing has been done to any of the images that you're seeing because everything's being recorded using this one, the Atomos Ninja V. All right, babe, let's do a few more. And I was controlling my Nanlite through the Nanlite app also. So it, everything's just so practical. I forgot to mention it. I got so excited to start shooting Coco with this one. Babe, why don't you move away from the chair a bit instead of leaning back, yeah? Yeah, from the back of the chair. There, that's perfect. So we can give a bit of separation. Beautiful. Profile towards me. Not too much, go back there, perfect. All right, I love it. Now, let me try to bring in a bit more light to this side of your face. And see, I'm not getting enough light. So, this reflector is not enough. Let me now get my five in one reflector. Let's try out the five in one reflector, the silver side, and see if we can bring back, there we go. Some specularity on her. You can hold it this way. There, that's perfect. Okay. Beautiful, babe. Love it. Maybe I will twist the camera slightly going here. Wait. Oh, why don't I put my name in? No, too much there. All right, that's perfect. Smile, babe. Love it. And there we go. I think I was happy with that. All right. So the Nanlite 
300B. Let me turn on this light first and maybe turn off the NAND light. Thank you very much, babe. You looked fantastic again. Let me turn this one off and bring it here, the star of the show for today. Again, this is the new, a brand new NAND light FS 300B. This is a 300 watt bicolor light from NAND light. It's in this small package, full Bowens mount, everything that you, that you can expect from every NAND light light that you've purchased before. And if you guys haven't, you know, this is the best LED light for me out there, bang for the buck. This one is just very affordable and it just does everything, everything that you needed to do. So this is going to be perfect for studio work. I think this is going to be one of the best lights for studio photographers if you just want to be shooting with continuous light, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel and like this video and while you're subscribing, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram. It's at Jagielandrino. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Okay, till the next video.